but he's just all elevated there. What a monster. Easy, easy. There you go. When there's an arch in my spine, the joints like a handshake are overlapping. There's a lot of strength in that. And when you bend forward, the surfaces separate, right? So I think of it like a handshake as a simple analogy. We have a lot of power here, mm -hmm. right? But if we separate, we're going to have to use a lot more muscles to hold yeah. on to each other, right? So in the same way, when we lose the curve in our spine, the muscles get tight, okay. right? So you, when we sit for a long period of time, i got all this tension now in my back, right? Because the muscles now are trying to hold it all together because the stability that the inherent curve provides has been taken away. Lower back pain, main symptom, been going on for a little over three years. Yeah, I, I'm one of those ever since COVID. Gotcha. Folks, you know, did a lot of sitting, uh, my fair share of movie marathons and video mm. games and... Mm, video games and movies, huh? Board like, games. Like this guy already. <laughs> All right. It's mostly lower back. It doesn't typically go down the legs with the exception of my right leg. Okay. On occasion, my... Uh, my right big toe and my heel will swell up and they'll be in pain and then, I'm not sure what it's called, but the second toe from the big toe, yes, yes, yes. that'll be in a lot of pain and that was uh, one of the focuses of my previous chiropractor. Okay. Was, and they took just x-rays of you? Did they take any MRIs or did they I take have some x-rays, but of very recently actually, a week before uh -huh. my last visit. Okay. And I have those on my phone. But no MRIs? No MRIs. Okay. I had a patient that was here just before you and he had x-rays and MRIs and I got to illustrate pretty clearly how x-rays can miss because we can't see the cartilage on x-ray. And so when we're young, especially you know before 50 really, the discs are made of water and when the water extrudes out and we don't have a lot of disc height loss, the x-ray might look good. You know, the height of the discs don't look that compressed yet, there's not big bone spurring that makes things obvious when you're 55, 60, 65. And so that symptom is a disc hitting a nerve, that 100%. There's nothing, you know, if we took an MRI of your lower back, we could see it. The x-ray is not going to show it. So we're left with, well, who knows what's causing it, right? But it's, uh, this area specifically is caused by, is really, is the L5 nerve. So okay. there's one nerve that goes to your big toe and a little bit of your second toe. This area is one nerve. So it'd be the L5 nerve in your lower back is the one that I would suspect is being hit. We could, again, the only way to see it is with an MRI. The lower back is the joint. So what that is, the knuckles. You have where you're supposed to have a curve in your lumbar. This is what you told me and I started sitting a lot. <laughs> yeah. Sitting takes the curve out of your back. And so when the back goes straight, all the weight like a ladder mechanically ends right at lumbar five. And we have these little knuckles where the vertebrae connect with the adjacent vertebrae and it's spraining. You're essentially the, the joint is inflamed. The joint strength comes from how well it overlaps. And that's part of what the curve does. If you can see when there's an when there's an arch in my spine, the joints, like a handshake, are overlapping. There's a lot of strength in that. And when you bend forward, the surfaces separate, right? So I think of it like a handshake as a simple analogy. We have a lot of power here, mm -hmm. right? But if we separate, we're going to have to use a lot more muscles to hold yeah. on to each other, right? So in the same way, when we lose the curve in our spine, the muscles get tight, okay. right? So you, when we sit for a long period of time, i got all this tension now in my back. Right, because the muscles now are trying to hold it all together because the stability that the inherent curve provides has been taken away. So. I think I took a passport photo uh -huh. probably two years ago when uh -huh. I first noticed it. Yeah. I haven't it, seen a good chiropractor in a while and I'm not we, stretching as much as so I it's, it's not. It's really a head tilt. Okay. What it is is that you have an injury on the left side of your neck, made your head tilt to the right, if you walk around with your head tilted, it makes you dizzy. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm seeing. Your right shoulder's elevated, but it's not a shoulder problem. It's a neck problem. You got a neck, your left side of your neck is um, in avoidance. Right hip is high. You know, so your body's, again, the symptoms are down your right leg, so your body's elevated your left hip. Because I showed you on that model, remember the whole yeah. changes inside if I tilt? So your body's doing this. And then this gets really stupid real quick. Oh, my left leg's short. <laughs> right? And so if somebody wants to put a heel lift in your left shoe, you understand? Or a chiropractor wants to take your left hip and push it back down. Then, right. we, run, then we run into the nerve again. Right? So 
The body did not elevate your hip unintelligently. It did it because you're pinching something. Do you understand? And you're going into avoidance. How do I get my hips level, Ed? We get rid of the reason for why it happens. The reason why this got inflamed over here that made your hip elevate was because this was stiff up here that can cause this to be abused, right? So we loosen this up. That takes the strap off your lower back. This is no longer injured. The hip will automatically come back down and level. We don't force it back down. It's what's commonly done because it seems simple. Hip high, hip down. <laughs> shoulder high, shoulder. It's, it, you get rid of the reason for why it exists. We're gonna leave that lower back alone, leave lower neck alone. Take a deep breath in. Head back for me. Get all the air out. Deep breath in for me. Head back for me. Exhale. Deep breath in for me. I got you. One more. Exhale. Let go. All right, good. All right. Reluctant. Moved. Aren't you happy yet? Well, kind of. <laughs> right? It moved, but I had to put a lot of force in. There should be an effortlessness to the mobility in there. Okay. Perfect. Take a deep breath in for me. Just relax. Exhale. Uh, I got you. Uh, exhale. Okay. Are you good? Aside from me, good. Enough. Exhale. All right, good. All right, good. Face up for me. Hello. I do uh, self-adjust quite a bit. Bad boy, bad boy. I know. Yeah, we got a knot right here. There it is. Hello. There we go. Took chiropractors 100 years to realize that we cannot change the position of a bone by adjusting it. That maybe temporarily for 30 seconds it would change its position, but to permanently change the position we have to stretch the rubber bands that wrap the spine called ligaments. And these ligaments can have to be stretched, you know, in the opposite fashion that we're used to in, in essentially bending back. Or most of our life is in front of us or down. We have to mirror image stretch and arch back to stretch the counter ligaments. And so everything I do on the table is prep for this. Uh, it's prep for the you know, final 10, 15 minutes with me. I'm going to arch you back and I'll show you how to do stuff at home to reestablish the correct alignment. If we're in the right alignment, the weight of our spine is going to be evenly distributed and not just one area being overstressed, your lower back, your lower neck. <laughs> you know, these are the typical areas that are the, at the forefront of being injured. Okay. And if you want me to be quiet, it costs double. Uh, it's discounted <laughs> if you let me talk. Okay, so uh, it'll be much more peaceful visit if you just shut up. Uh -huh. No, no, it's... Uh, well, for some, maybe. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm that's, teasing. that's actually something that I appreciate I, about you. I'm glad to hear. I'm glad to hear. Because <laughs> some of the comments sometimes my wife's like, this person will show me. <laughs> there we go. I, uh, I teach dance. Oh, okay. And, um, you know, I, I love to teach the why. And okay. that's something that I admire about what makes you unique. Uh -huh. You like to teach the why. The why, exactly. It's usually the hardest question to answer. We can figure out the how and the what and the why, the purpose. That's why I love physiology more than anatomy, right? Because anatomy just tells you all the structures, right? It shows you all, all of why it's, all of what's there, right? The physiology is the why, how it works, <laughs> its purpose, what it, how they interact with each other, right? That's the connections, the function of the, of the organs in the body. I had way more fun in physiology than anatomy. <laughs> you have to get your head over to the left. Right there. Feels lovely. Yes, feels lovely. Oh, delightful, Ed. Yes. All right. Comes up real quick. I find the soft tissue work expedites and speeds up this process of making the spine supple so that we can utilize the stretching to create a permanent change. And not to say that I don't wish it were true that I could just adjust you and send you on your way. <laughs> There's just no research to prove that that will actually do anything permanently. That the only way to change someone's posture permanently is through counter stretching. So um, part of the, uh, as I said before, the heartbreak of leaving San Diego, Dr. Sam's fiance 
Dr. Jacqueline had an office right across the hall from him. Cool. And uh, she's an acupuncturist. Cool. So I experienced gua sha cupping, Wonderful. acupuncture with her. Maybe set for me. It's not loud. Is it really fast? Exactly. Exactly. I ride a motorcycle, so That's, I. Ooh, what kind of bike? I emphasize. A Cowie Z900. Mm-hmm. Oh my. Okay. All right. I had some rockets, but I know I have a cruiser. I got a VTX and 1800, and yeah, but I had a CBRF4, and I had a uh, uh, SV650, and yeah. So you like the the naked stuff like mine. Yeah, yeah. Well, what kind of games? Tell me, what, what you, PC gamer, Xbox? What are you? I do Xbox. Uh huh. What's your games? Um, I do. Uh, I do a lot of old school stuff. I really like Streets of Rage. Oh my gosh. Yeah. OG and, uh, stuff, man. I used to play the. I had a Sega CD when that first came out. Yeah. Uh, played Streets of Rage, and then my Sega Genesis, Streets of Rage two and three. Yeah. And then I have my. Uh, my FPS, I like uh, Apex Legends. Okay. That. Yeah, 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 okay. Haven't played it, but I've been more of it. Yeah. Not a Call of Duty guy. Good, okay. No. <laughs> yeah, not my thing. Okay. Um, I always make fun of brothers. A P- uh, console gamer, I'm a PC gamer. I like the mouse and keyboard, Counter Strike. Okay. You know, I used to have LAN parties in my garage with my friends. Oh, and... man, you were the cool kid. <laughs> <laughs> Before high speed internet, that was the only way to yeah. have your low ping. That's all you could do. So you play Arma. Uh, Escape from Tarkov, or are you more of like a no, League, I don't, League I, of Legends? I no, I know League of Legends. Ugh. No, I, I now I play uh, stuff like Diablo two, or you know more. I don't okay. Play, I still I, what are my FPS is I still like old Quake stuff, old Quake and uh, Counter Strike. That's respect. This is all elevated right here. This needs to go down. The thoracic cage is becoming hyper, what we call hyperkyphotic. So when we lose the curve in our neck, it has to go somewhere else. It goes into usually our upper back. Right, so how do we restore the curve to your neck? It also requires reduction of this curve that's too large. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So as we reduce the hyperkyphosis of your thoracic cage, we can start inducing the lordosis in your lumbar and in your neck. And that's how we, again, balance the, the weight over all the vertebrae and the spine. There we go. First visit's me doing a song and dance and just getting used to somebody uh-huh, beating you up and and loosening everything up and getting it all moving. You know, for most people, I know you've been through some chiropractic care, but most of my patients have had well, zero, you know, care before me. <laughs> or at the very least deep tissue work and, you know, soft tissue work. And so it's like a foundation that nobody, I'm starting at scratch, I'm starting at dirt <laughs> and building a, ba- a building. And, you know, it's, when we're dealing with posture, it's a, it's a, it's a story, it's a journey. Would you say most of your day is, is seated, or are you up or running around, or what's, what's your position throughout your day mainly? I average about between 12 to 16,000 steps a day. Okay. So you're on your feet mainly. mainly. Okay, good. Yeah. Right. But I do drive about an hour each way. Okay, all right, all right, good. Long term, it's a lot easier to, to change posture than a person that's sitting for 12 hours a day. So I think really the only component really you're missing is the counter-stretching that You've been worked on, you've been adjusted, you've had soft tissue work, but I imagine that, has anybody, has anybody really laid you down and had you bend back and arch back? No, they have not. Mm-hmm. That's the, so that's really the component that we're going to be focusing on at the end of the visit, is getting you under, to understand how we have to counter-stretch that the posture, the posture you're in throughout most of the day is where your body wants to be. So if we're sitting a lot, when you, when you go to stand up, you retain some of that sitting. But because of the years of school from 5 to 20, where we spent a majority of our time sitting, and then any injuries we had, we healed sitting, 
we have to do work now to undo those 15 years of school. <laughs> I stretch my hips out a lot, but uh, I haven't done much from my upper back or uh, shoulders in a while. Now you indicated also, is it, is it indigestion or you had some stomach issues over there on the paperwork? Did you? Yes. Tell uh, me about I'm not exactly sure what the cause is, but... Well, it's, 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 from, it's your back. <laughs> so the nerves that go to your stomach come from here. Okay. And so the same areas that have all this inflammation, which we'll show you in a second when I go out show you, are the nerves that go to your organs. And so... It's, it leads me to the, understand, the conversation that your spinal health is your health, that, that the spinal column is the conduit with which your brain communicates to every organ. And if the signals from your brain to the organ don't reach, right? if, you're, if you can't reach a signal to your, you can't message your employees, right? nothing gets done. Right? Right. You have to be able to have that communication lines. And so your spinal column is the, you know, what houses your spinal cord, which is the electricity with which the brain communicates to the organ. So your stomach isn't gonna function properly if right in here, where the nerves that leave your spinal column that go to your stomach, if this area is all inflamed, then the signals don't get clearly transmitted to the organ. Right here is what gets real stiff. This one right here is the most primary area that overstresses your lower back and. The left middle controls the right lower, if that makes sense. So the tighter part is here, and that's what's making the right foot, right lower back overwork. It's your left middle that's locked. Feel the difference from that to this? This yeah. side's more smooth, and then you got this blockade right here. Middle back, left blockade. Oh, what a lovely Ooh. blockade. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's all crunchy right there. of your neck here, these all have to go kind of down. It looks so much nicer in the video. Mm cleaner side when I get to that left in a second.
this whole like if it, if you do soccer or something, something collided with you here, right? <laughs> uh, I did play soccer. I'm saying th these ribs are not. This right here is like flush, and then I got a collision. Like I feel like something hit here. <laughs> and ah, he, I see what you mean. Something happened, but you then tilted to the right to get away from the, the bomb went off right here. <laughs> Counter-terrorist win. You know, anyway, <laughs> bomb has been planted. Right there, you can actually see it. That's, there was a trauma there. It wasn't so much the, it's a little bit here on the vertebrae, but as I go out here lateral to the rib heads, it gets even larger. So to me, the, the original force went like that, and then it hit this mainly, and then it did injure the vertebral joints, but the rib head joints were the most significantly injured. And then they tightened up, they got stiff, he tilted to the right, it went away, right? <laughs> it, it, the body immobilized it and leaned away from it. I'm trying to think of what could have happened. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, I've had a couple of motorcycle accidents, but they've all been very low speed. Okay. This probably, to me, this happened teenage, this is before 26. The mark doesn't come out if there's nothing there. There has to be something underneath that I can draw out. Right. Right? So. There is a significant amount of mark coming out on this left side, which implies that, like the longer the stain's been there, the more it doesn't want to leave. You know, the older the stain, the more scrubbing it requires to get it out of there. Mm -hmm. I mean, this all this whole it's like no wonder you're saying that's why it's your right leg. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. This is just simply the, you're you're avoiding this, and the work you do like 60-40, or at the very least maybe seventy thirty. You favor standing on that right leg. You're you're in right abuse. Left avoidance. He's all elevated there. What a monster. Here we go. Keep that forehead to forearm contact. All right, breathe in for me. Easy for me. Exhale. Easy. Good. Okay. All right. All right. Easy. Easy. Arms back down for me. Okay. Good. Okay. Self-cracker, uh-huh, pop in your own lower, no, two, two ways to help you. One, you won't be, you'll feel the desire to and you won't be able to, are our goals. Your desire to comes from the fact that it gets inflamed and you can release the pressure by adjusting it. But if we can change the posture, you won't feel that urge to do that. Your ability to even self-pop the lower back will go down because it won't be able to isolate as easily. And so, uh-huh. If we keep popping it like a bone, if you overwork a muscle, it grows. If you overwork your skin, you get a callus, and if you overwork a joint, you get a bone spur. So over time, if we keep popping that same joint, the bone will get larger, and the medical world and chiropractic world call that a disease. <laughs> when a bone grows, they say it's degenerative joint disease, and they go, no, it's an adaptation to stress, just like a muscle getting bigger. And we don't call muscles getting bigger diseases. Look at that monster. That's, that's pretty wild. You see the impact? That right there is where it went off. There's the midline joints then right here on the side. Yeah, there's almost nothing on the right. I think I said there's there's a little bit of, but this is the origin and the right side's gonna pay for that blockade over here. So as we're, you might even feel it when we're stretching. You might feel like, Adam, I feel like I'm crooked on this. Well, because this is so more elevated, you actually are. And then as you do the stretch more like dough, it'll level out. But you're gonna, when we're, when we're initially stretching on that, you might feel like you're, I don't think it's centered, Ed. It is <laughs> because your back isn't level. I was feeling that just now on the table, actually. Right, you'll you'll feel crooked. You you're actually centered <laughs> because <laughs> your back isn't level. It's going to feel, and that you'll auto level to the stretch. The way that the stretch is designed, as your back complies to it, it levels out. Yeah, let's get it all. There we go. Ooh, nice. Uh, speaking of elbows, I'm yeah. not sure if I put it in the notes, but. That work injury, uh -huh. uh, medial epicondylitis. Uh huh. I got gotcha. you. What do they teach you about that? Uh, that I got to um, work on the tendons, and I do that almost every day. How do you How do you work on that? I'm curious. So, right angle, flex, stretch, 
uh -huh. to strengthen, and it's helped quite a bit. Okay. For the right side, the right side was the original uh -huh. uh, injury. Okay. And then it, uh, eventually it translated to the left because I had to compensate. Okay. I will show you. I'm gonna show you some stuff. Okay. dives through the bone. So I think of the bone as having layers. Okay. And so the tendon dives through the, the bone and makes roots of what we call the endosteum. And when you're pulling on that attachment all the time, you start to separate the layers of the bone. And then fluid gets in here, and there's actually nerve endings in between the layers of the bone called Sharpie fibers. And this tendon actually has like a hook. There are barbs going backwards on the tendon. Does that make sense? So as it as you're pulling on it all the time, you're actually ripping the bone up a little bit as it's pulling out. And then it starts to actually evolve, is what eventually causes an avulsion fracture, you'll hear of. An avulsion fracture where the tendon is pulling on it so much that the bone's actually lifting off itself, right? So the, the treatment for this is actually panini those layers back down. We need to work on that attachment and mash the attachment back down. So to do that, it's the, uh, the medial epicondyle controls your flexion muscles. So the muscles that uh, bend your wrist this way are what attach here. Your extension muscles attach on your lateral epicondyle. Okay, so medial epicondyle would be right here. And you want to compress and panini, you understand, down that attachment. Okay. I mean, the active exercises, you know, the, the tendons on a six-week replacement cycle, no matter what, but it will heal much faster if we can close the wound. Right, think of a wound on your skin that if you gape it, it's going to heal with a bigger scar. We do want to work on stretching these muscles here. So if, if these muscles stay tight, do you see how it keeps a constant pull on that attachment? So when you're in the shower end of the day, kind of just release any tension you might have in here from working. And you want to work this towards the elbow. Make sense? You want to, mm -hmm. you want to work the attachment back down to the bone. You shouldn't rub this way. That would be pulling it off. You want to massage. And then on the attachment, I don't do any transfriction. You just hold. So on the attachment, you just simply mash. Okay? I wouldn't do any, like, rubbing over the attachment. You're just taking that attachment, find that spot, and mash. That makes sense? That tendon back down onto the bone. About, you know, 20 seconds, just hold compression on that. And then you can do transfriction on the muscle here. Right in here, you know, release the spasms. Now, ultimately, the neck controls this, so this is where it gets even more. It's always your spine. <laughs> because if the neck's upset, do you understand? That can zap the muscle, which then pulls on the attachment. And so my, my father was in the room. He'd go, and it's his neck. <laughs> <laughs> but I believe it's both. You understand? And I believe that you can speed this process up by working on the limb. <laughs> Dropping the elbow. That's right. Right there. There you go. And work that towards the elbow. Right, so you're working towards the attachment. Elbow adjustment here. There we go. How's that wrist feel stability wise on like the You injured it before? Yeah, radio lunar fractures with my Feel yeah, that's a little cruncher there. That's not normal. That's why it made a loud click. Perfect. <laughs> well what happens is that when you break your wrist, <laughs> your body's gonna add more bone, right? Because okay. it's gonna expect you to break it again. Alright. So what makes the calcium get deposited? The calcium is attracted magnetically to lactic acid. Pain. You're saying if you rub this and it hurts, then potentially more calcium will be deposited, right? So this is where I would go in and adjust it. You're saying work the tissue, flush out any acidity in the area. It's like leaving bird poop on your paint of your car is going to eat away at the paint, right? Leaving plaque on your teeth eats away at the enamel. Does that make sense? Leaving acidity on a bone causes bone spurring. You understand? So you want to rinse off the inflammation. 
the past six months, I've just been self-adjusting, creating that traction to open it up. And you kind of just, this one, you just kind of, I usually grab it and then just, use my chest, I pull. <laughs> you just try to open it up, so you kind of grab the wrist, trying to just traction it, really. You're just pulling it open, trying to flush some blood in there. It's like yeah. decompressing it to let blood get in there, to lubricate it. It's not, there's like eight marbles in there. <laughs> if, you take a, if you take a picture of the x-ray of the wrist, you're like, it's all broken! No, it's normal. <laughs> There's a bunch of, it looks shattered when you look at a picture of the x-ray of the wrist. Everybody at home go and do that. It's like, what the heck? No, it's normal, but um, there's definitely some scar tissue right here. That's, I don't think that exists over here. I noticed when I was adjusting it. Yeah, see, it's like, it's like it's smooth. See that? Yeah. That's normal. Yeah, yeah. that that's, uh, was a work injury. You got some gristle in there. Look up for me a little bit and then press back with your elbow. Here we go. Good. Push, look up for me a little bit, look up, press back. Here we go, yeah. Here, get all punched up. There we go. All right, go ahead and tilt your head left for me, tilt left. Go ahead and tilt left. That was a loud one. That's first for that ear. Okay. Go ahead and tilt right. The purpose of this is now to actually just kind of let your body sink into the floor, uh, relax your neck. Um, there's no active part of this. This is a passive stretch. I do think about this as an end of the day stretch, right? So you don't brush your teeth and then eat a bowl of ice cream and go to bed. You want to don't the last thing you do to put your spine in the right position and then go to sleep. So half hour, hour before you go to bed is the ideal time to be stretching, counter stretching, Perhaps all your, you know, even though you might be standing, you might be looking at your phone. Obviously, your phone should be elevated. Every time you tuck your chin down, every time you tuck your chin down. What's that? Hang on. Anyway, end of the day, stretching, molding. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, you got to vodka and somehow survive 20 minutes. You know, the goal with the care is the more I work on the table, do you understand this becomes easier because the spine becomes more supple and then becomes more compliant and willing to bend. Um, there you go. What is that? I'd rather you I'd rather you make it easier. Do you understand? Then get off. Time is more important than depth. Get some blocks or books. Don't need to kill yourself the first time you do it. You understand? Don't it's a it's a it's a ra it's a rally. It's not a race. <laughs>